Hi, this is William Derek Johnson. Some musings, some alien races, as a reply to the Complex Games Apologists. The thing on alien races. Here are five case studies of some of the more notable alien races out there in science fiction land. First up, Wells's Martians. Huge creatures, the size of bears, composed entirely of brain or a head. They have 16 tentacles in two groups of eight and huge eyes. And these creatures are nothing but brain. They're the end point of what Wells imagined our evolution would lead us to, possibly. So they are a very ancient race, a very ancient species indeed. And they of course have mastered things like space travel, dimensional travel, or however you flip from star to star. And they have a very old and very reliable form of space travel. They are also incredibly intelligent. They are psionic for in the books it is revealed they communicate telepathically with one another. They do not speak. And they drink blood. The blood of sentient races seems to be something they delight in. So Wellsian Martians would make an excellent major race, a race that can travel for something with good intelligence, but not very high on the movement thing, because they will build a machine to do their work for them. Martians will always be accompanied by their machines that they will wear, the same way you wear clothes. So that is the oldest and possibly the most dangerous and hostile of races. But they have reasons to interact with what they recognize now as other star fairy races. And so maybe they can get along, maybe they can cooperate, maybe you can have communication with a Martian if, well, you have blasters and ray guns and spaceships of your own. But woe betide you if you do not have these things. <laughs> Next up are the Jofa from David Brin's Uplift series. The Jofa are a plant based species and they are constructed from a pyramid of circular fungoid plantoid rings and a Jofa or a Trachy to do it use its more, less fascist version, is a set of rings. And the attributes and abilities of a Jofa depends on what rings it has. It will have a motile ring at the bottom for moving around in. It will have some thinking rings. It will have some manipulatory rings. It will probably have a communication rings. But it will have many other weird specialised rings it can put in. And so a Jofa is more of a modular being. If it needs a new set of abilities, then it goes and gets a ring which will do that and puts it in its stack. So a Jofa could possibly mix and match its abilities. It could adapt, it could decide what features it has today. And after selecting from a series of rings, that is a very interesting thing. You could say, I need manip more manipulatory appendages to wield my 15 different blasters. So I'll have some more manipulative rings, but less thinky brain rings. And I want one of those special abilities I can use with my pheromones. I'll have a pheromone ring as well, and I'll stack that on my motor ring, and then I'll go out as a battle joker. But later on, when I want to do my thinking, I'll have to spend some downtime so I can get, so I can rework re 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 myself. So I have less manipulative tentacles and less special abilities, but a lot of thinky brain stuff. So the joker, a mix and match alien. Next, we have from Alan Dean Foster's The Damned series, the Lapa. The Lapa are amphibi an amphibious race. They are quite slow. The characters are slow and stupid, not very bright, but they're hard workers. They are persistent, they are enduring, they are patient. The Lapa are revealed in the end 
to be a very patient race, very patient species. They may not get there first, but they will get there in the end. So La Power would possibly be in game terms, she'll probably have good endurance stats, good survival stats, good abilities to weather lots of punishment. And the other gift of the Lapa, spoilers, but spoilers of a thirty year old book, so wow. They are res they are incredibly resistant to psionics. They are practically immune to the psionic beings in that series. And that can be their major draw card. They are slow, they are stupid, but they are enduring, and they ignore all that psionic voodoo and voodoo and mind control that everyone else is so susceptible to. And so that is the draw and appeal of being a slow, patient, dim lapar. When the evil Martian or the mind, the Jofra of its mind controlling rings works, it tries to work its voodoo on you, the lapar goes, no, I will not deal with that. And I will clumsily, slowly shoot you. Next we have Niven and Pronell's Fifth from the book Footfall. They are a species which has managed to lift itself by on the up on by the bootstraps of its original progenitor race. They were pets. Or they were some sort of domesticated animal, and the original species went extinct and they were just smart enough to be able to pick up the pieces puzzle out space travel and make it all the way to earth to conduct their abortive invasion of the earth but you can have Fifth in your science fictional game as this bootstrapped up pet race they were originally pets they were originally herd species they are herd they, they think in herds they think in groups they are very collective they are they will organize together. They cannot conceive of, really, of a one, a unitary being. Of a fifth will probably be a group of stompy elef elephant, elephant things with prehensile trunks to manipulate tools. They're not very good tool users, but they make it there in the end. But the fifth will be a collective. You will be playing multiple creatures. None of them particularly bright, none of them particularly good at individual individually doing anything or coming to, you know, they might go to pieces of us to come up with something on the fly, but there are a lot of them. And so you can play a species which is the proverbial red shirt species. They, you know, one for the full die, but there's always one more to replace it. They are replaceable. And so they wove on things by sheer force of numbers. And again, they've managed to uplift themselves, to pull themselves up by, on, up on the coattails of whatever species came before them. And that's also a good enigma. What was that original species? Where are they now? What happened to them? Why are the fifth now the major race and not their parents? And lastly, we have Trex Horta, a silicoid species, a rock, an ambulatory rock, one that I imagine can extend a pseudopod to manipulate things and again not a very fast race but very tough probably able to survive vacuum for long periods of time without need of a suit able to eat through most materials for it's very dissolving very corrosive can make itself very hot and but does have difficulty communicating with others Probably isn't the fastest thinker or the fastest mover, but comes with a wide range of weird and alien abilities. And it's probably a very secretive, very burrowing race. How they have managed to build spaceships and go exploring is a mystery to anyone. Their ships are probably also not classic chrome and steel things. They are probably they probably use mined out asteroids that they have hollowed out themselves and then installed drives and secure areas to keep whatever supplies they need, oxygen, minerals. They might form might they might form colonies of, of these mo motile asteroids. 
and they probably feel because they are very long lived species they are basically a rock they don't they won't age like other fleshy like the fleshy races there may seem no need for faster than light travel they know of it they can do it but they see no point if you are traveling at resort cliff and it's going to take you 5,000 years to reach the nearest star then so be it but maybe there is one or two quarter out there that want to see the universe want to see something new now and they could be the PC race so there are five interesting alien races to think about ones that are truly alien and not just someone in a funny rubber suit with some odd ridges on them and some antennae or fur consider those as your aliens